If you're struggling to grow on Instagram, then you're probably making one, some more, all of the Instagram mistakes that I'm about to share in this video. So be sure to watch it to find out what you're doing wrong and what things you can change, shift or evolve to make it right. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie, CEO and co-founder of Boss Babe. So if you're new here, this channel is all about supporting ambitious women. I share no BS, straight to the point strategies on building a personal brand, growing on social media and starting or scaling your online business. So if you're into that, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe to the channel and join our amazing growing community on here. Okay, here's the thing. I know a thing or two about growing Instagram accounts. I've grown the Boss Babe Instagram account to over 3 million followers and my personal account to 200,000. And I don't say that to brag, I just, say it to prove point, I've been there, I've done it. So you can trust that I've made the mistakes over the years and I've also found what works. I've also worked with thousands of clients on showing them how to grow their social media and I see people who aren't growing a lot. I know they're probably making one of these mistakes and when we dive into it, we normally find a way to rectify their mistake and scale their strategy. So the first mistake is inconsistency. I said it before and I'll say it again, consistency really truly is key when it comes to growing an audience on Instagram. You have to show up with a clear, compelling message each and every day with captions written around five or six content pillars that are unique to you and your brand and have pictures or videos that look as cohesive as they do aesthetically pleasing. I mean, how can you expect people to trust you enough to follow you and later buy from you if you aren't delivering value regularly and just showing up when you feel like it or you know, you're not sticking to the same subjects, topics and messages that you share so they're not really sure what you do. The more you publish posts of the same or similar nature at regular intervals the more you'll evoke a feeling of familiarity in the people that you're trying to reach. If people land on your feed and can immediately tell who you are, what you do and how you'll help them day on day on they're much more likely to hit that follow button and return to consume the content that you create. The next mistake is buying fake followers. Back in the day when Instagram was evolving, it was common practice sadly to buy fake followers and in fact many business coaches and mentors were advocates of it, which makes me so mad. <laughs> but buying fake followers is not the way to go. People thought that the larger the following you had, the more likely it would be for strangers who didn't know who you were to trust you enough to follow you. The fact that other people were, would demonstrate to them that you have something to share and are someone worth following or learning from because you'll have people showing up to follow you. But whilst the psychology of that might make sense, what people didn't know at the time is that it actually really hurts your account through the algorithm that's responsible for your audience growth. So something that you want to stay away from. The algorithm can tell what percentage of your following is fake. It can detect which of your following is active, which means they're engaging with you and other people and inactive, just not engaging at all. The more fake followers you have, the worse your engagement and reach is going to be from that. How? Well, here's how the Instagram algorithm works. First, it presents the content you've created to a really small percentage of your following. If lots of people engage with it, it will push the content in front of more percentage of your following and keep doing that. So if lots of people engage with that, it's gonna show it to more people still by putting it onto the explore page and recommending people that don't follow you to consume the content. But here's the thing, if some of the people Instagram presents your content to are fake, then they won't engage with you for real and your engagement will be way lower as a result. So your content won't even get shown to the people that are actually following you. Fake followers are not a quick fix, they're a quick break. Do not exchange your engagement and growth for any vanity metrics like that because it's really not worth it. A similar thing can be said for buying bots to get engagement. Don't do it. Bots can be spotted a mile off by your following and the Instagram algorithm. Again, it's not the good look you want for your Instagram account. Bots might like your content, but as I'll explain in a second, this is the least important mode of engagement. But the comments they leave just are not worth it, all right? In fact, they aren't of any value to you whatsoever. Bots are programmed to comment on the likes of love this post or a string of emojis, which isn't often picked up by the Instagram algorithm or detected as meaningful human interaction and rightly so. If a human was really truly interested in hearing what you had to say, they'd leave a comment that was much more thought out. They'd maybe share it on their stories. They'd send it to a friend. They'd be really considerate when they were engaging with you. It would be longer in form and directly relevant to the content that you created. It would also likely use some of the same keywords or phrases or one similar 
similar to them so it'd be really obvious what's real and what isn't all right so don't go down that route it's just not helpful of course humans also do leave short and sweet messages from time to time too but algorithm is typically favored to those that are getting meaningful social interaction which you won't have if you've got a ton of bots engaging with you all the time versus real people all right the next mistake is focusing on your like count if you're making getting likes your number one priority then that could really be hindering how quickly and easily you grow because other engagement metrics matter more like saves and shares saves for example are really really important because they communicate to the instagram algorithm that people are really interested in what you have to say they're gonna come back and actually consume it so they've put a pin on it so they can come back later not only did they like your content enough to consume it once they want to digest it over and over and it meant something to them if that isn't an indicator of content that educates entertains or a bit of both then i don't really know what is shares are also often more important than likes according to the instagram algorithm and it's really interesting because if you think about it if someone shares your content then not only did they like what they saw they want other people to take a look at it as well this is a mark of virality the content spreads not just because the Instagram spots it value and pushes it to more people, but because human beings are doing that for you and they're putting it in front of their friends. People share content for a couple of reasons. Identification, this is me, you, us, because they've learned something new or because they've been made to smile or laugh or feel some kind of emotion from it, all right? So those three things are really important. I hope these tips and tricks help you feel a lot more confident in yourself and your abilities to show up on social consistently. And thank you for watching as always. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what you want to see more of from me. I really appreciate every like, comment, subscribe and share. So leave me one below, let me know what you want to see and I'll see you next week.